Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a quick and easy cotton dishcloth. So in this pattern, essentially what it is, is you're going to start on one of these corners. We're going to increase and then we're also going to add in yarn overs to create these little openings on either side. So we're going to increase up until about the halfway point. Then we switch over to decreases, work all the way up through the decreases and cast off up here at the top. So these are knit completely flat. And you can really use any worsted weight cotton yarn that you have available to you. So some examples would be the sugar and cream. This is some denim yarn. And all of these recommend anywhere between a four and a five millimeter or a six to eight US size knitting needle. This project is knit flat. So here in front of me, I have a US seven knitting needle. That's my preferred size to use for this project. And I don't own straight knitting needles in all the range of sizes, so I'm going to be using a circular knitting needle, but knitting flat on them. I also have one stitch marker to mark the front and the back of my work. A tape measure so that I can measure how far I've worked up through the increases. Then last up, you're also going to need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends at the end. Now this pattern is really similar to kind of, I think it's called like the traditional dishcloth something like that. I'll link it down below in the description box. But what I did is I modified it a little bit, basically based off of my knitting preferences. So I like to have a really smooth edge. So I switched it to have a slip stitch edge. And then my yarn overs increases and decreases are worked a little bit differently. But if you're interested in seeing kind of like the original pattern that this came from, I don't believe it has a designer associated with it, but I'll link down below some videos and other versions of this a similar pattern if you're interested. So now let's get started with that cast on. So today I'm going to be using this worsted weight cotton yarn, and this one is just cotton, so 100% cotton. Now first up, I'm going to start off with a slip knot. So the way I create a slip knot is I lay a little bit of my yarn tail over my left hand, grab onto that yarn with my bottom three fingers. Now I'm going to take the ball of yarn, go up behind my finger, down below to the bottom, back up the front to the top, back down below to the bottom, up the front to the top, back down below to the bottom. And now I'm going to grab onto that second strand with my bottom three fingers as well. So now it's essentially like I have like two and a half loops going around my pointer finger. Create the slip knot, I'm just going to rearrange them. So I'm going to take the second loop, bring it up closer to the top of my finger. Then I'm going to take the new second loop, bring it up closer to the top of my finger. Now I'm going to grab onto the newest second loop and I'm going to slide that off my finger. And now I have a slip knot. So I'm going to take one of my knitting needle points here and slide that slip knot right onto the knitting needle. And I pull on that yarn tail to loosely tighten it on there. You don't want it to be too tight. You still want it to be able to slide around. Now for this pattern, I have to cast on a total of three stitches. The slip knot does count as the first stitch. So to cast on the rest of my stitches, I'm going to use the backward loop cast on. So to do that cast on, I'm going to hold my knitting needle that I'm casting on the stitches onto in my right hand. I'm just going to hold the tail over there as well so I don't accidentally start casting on with that. Now to work this cast on, you're going to take your left hand, put it behind your strand of yarn, grab onto the strand of yarn with your bottom three fingers, and now you're going to take your pointer finger, go down below the strand, up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again. Now once you're here, you're going to take your knitting needle, go underneath that loop on your pointer finger, slide it off your finger onto the knitting needle. Now don't drop that yarn out of your left hand. All you need to do now is loop it again. So take your pointer finger up, back behind, down to the bottom, down below, up the front to the top. Slide that topmost loop off of your finger onto your knitting needle. And now we've cast on three stitches. So next up for row one, I'm going to turn my work. So now my knitting needle is pointed over towards the right. And I'm going to go right into that first stitch and knit. And as I'm knitting, I'm making sure I'm using my working yarn, not my yarn tail. 
I'm going to knit all the way across this row. Sometimes that first stitch likes to get a little big. I just pull my slip knot to tighten it up a bit. Perfect. Now I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work row two. So this is the first row we're going to be increasing. So here it says slip one purl wise. So I'm going to slip the first stitch purl wise. Then it says make one right. So before I make one right, I'm going to bring my working yarn to the back of my work. Now I'm going to make one right. So to make one right, I'm going to stretch out my work in between my two knitting needles. And you can see how there's that topmost bar there. I need to pick up that topmost bar going from back to front with my left knitting needle. So left knitting needle point going behind that bar to the front. Now I'm going to knit into the front of that loop. Wrap my yarn around, pull through, slide it off. Now I'm going to knit one. And now I'm going to make one left. So again, I need to stretch out my work so that I can find that topmost bar. So it'll be that top one right there. I'm going to pick it up now going from front to back. And now I'm going to knit into the back of that loop. Now I'm going to knit the final stitch. Now that we've worked those two setup rows, we're ready to begin our repeat rows with our increases. The first increase repeat row, I'm going to work, slip one purlwise, and you'll notice that while I'm slipping one purlwise, my yarn stays in the front exactly where it was when I turned my work. Now I'm going to bring it to the back before I work my knitting stitches. Then it says knit one, yarn over. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front. then bring it back behind again. So kind of next up, it says yarn over. So I'm going to bring my yarn to the front. Then as I work the next stitch, it's going to create a yarn over over the knitting needle. So next up, it says knit until two stitches remain. So I only have three here. So I'm just going to knit one. And now you can check that that yarn over worked. You should see that right before that stitch you just knit, there's a wrapped piece of yarn going from the front of your work to the back of your work. That is your yarn over. Now I need to work another yarn over. So I'm going to bring my working yarn to the front. And now I'm going to knit the final two stitches. So to check that other yarn over, before those two knit stitches. Again, I have a yarn wrap that starts out in the front and goes to the back of my work. Now, before I turn my work, what I like to do is I like to add a stitch marker just to mark that this is row one on my pattern when I'm working those repeat rows. Makes it a little bit easier, especially when I get to the decreases to keep track of what's the front and the back of my work. Okay, now I'm going to turn my work. This pattern, or this row, says slip one purlwise. Now I'm going to bring my working yarn to the back in between those two knitting needles. And I'm going to knit all the way across. And when I knit into those yarn overs, it's going to seem really loose. Right, but you actually just want to keep on knitting into them, even though they're loose, because that's what forms what looks like those little openings on this pattern. So I'll show you in a second once I finish knitting across this row. So those yarn overs are what's creating all these openings along the edges. So it should feel like a really loose stitch when you are knitting into those yarn overs on increase repeat row two. 
So now I've turned my work again and I can tell because I have the stitch marker facing me. So now again, I'm gonna work increase repeat row one. So just to show it one more time, I'm gonna slip the first stitch purl wise, bring my yarn to the back, knit one, then I need to work a yarn over. So I'm gonna bring my working yarn to the front, knit until two stitches remain. So now I have a total of five. So I'm gonna knit three stitches here. And as I knit into this next stitch, I'm creating that yarn over. Yarn over again. So bring the working yarn to the front, knit two. Perfect. And again, I'm just gonna turn my work, slip one purlwise, bring my yarn to the back and knit across. Now I'm gonna continue working these two increase row repeats over and over again until my work measures six and a half inches along the edge. So what I'm gonna be measuring is down here, this is where my cast on is, then we're working up through the rows, is I'm gonna measure one of these sides and once the length of one of these sides measures six and a half inches, then I'm gonna come back and show you the decreases for how we work up here at the top, and then lastly, cast off. Now, if you wanted to make yours any larger or smaller, that six and a half inches would be what you'd wanna modify. So I kept repeating those two rows until my sides measured six and a half inches. And I just finished after an increase, repeat row two. And now I turn my work so the front side is up again. So first up, I'm gonna move my little stitch marker up a little bit higher so it's easier for me to see. Great. So now I'm gonna begin the decreases. So just like the increases, there's two rows that we're gonna work over and over again to decrease back down till eventually we end up with three stitches again. So first, for decrease repeat row one, I'm gonna slip the first stitch purlwise. Then I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back. Now I'm gonna work a knit two together. So knit two together, I'm gonna to take my right knitting needle into the base of the next two stitches at the same time, knitwise, wrap my yarn around, pull through, yarn over, so bring my yarn to the front. Now I'm gonna knit across this row until three stitches remain. So again, what that yarn over just did was I should now have my yarn wrapped from the front to the back as essentially like my third stitch in there. So I'm gonna keep on knitting until three stitches remain in this row. Now I'm gonna work a yarn over, so bring my yarn to the front, knit two together again, so next two stitches, take my right knitting needle into the base of, wrap my yarn around, pull through, and now knit the final stitch. Now I'm gonna turn my work and begin decrease repeat row two. So on this side, I don't have my stitch marker. I'm gonna slip my first stitch purlwise, then bring my yarn to the back, knit two stitches, then work a knit two together. Knit until five stitches remain. Five stitches remain, including that yarn over. So that yarn over counts as kind of my third stitch there. Knit two together again. And now I'm gonna knit my last three stitches. Now I'm gonna turn my work and begin those two rows again. And I'm gonna continue working them over and over again until I have nine stitches remaining on my knitting needles. Then I'm gonna show you when I come back the different kinds of decreases there we have to do to get down from the nine to the three. So I'm gonna keep on repeating those two rows for now. 
Now I'm down to those final nine stitches and I do have the front side of my work facing me again. So first up, the row I'm gonna work is slip one purl wise. Then I'm gonna knit two stitches. And now I'm gonna do a decrease in the center of the row. So to work this decrease, I'm gonna slip two stitches as if I'm working a knit two together. So I'm gonna take both stitches, right knitting needle into the bottom base of them and just slip them from my left to right knitting needle. Now I'm gonna knit one stitch from my left knitting needle. And now I'm gonna take those two stitches that I slipped and pass them up over and off the one stitch I just knit. So that formed a center decrease and we just turned those three stitches into just one. Now I'm gonna knit the final three stitches. And turn my work. Now on this side of my work, I'm gonna slip my first stitch purlwise. Now bring my yarn to the back, knit two together, yarn over, so bring the yarn to the front, knit one, bring the yarn to the front again for a yarn over, knit two together, then knit the final stitch. Again, I'm going to turn my work. Slip the first stitch purlwise, bring my yarn to the back, work a knit two together. So now I'm knitting together the yarn over and the previous stitch. Knit one. We're gonna knit two together, so I'm knitting together the stitch and the yarn over. Knit the final stitch. Turn my work again. And now for this final row, I'm gonna slip the first stitch purlwise, bring my working yarn to the back. Then again, next I'm gonna work that two stitch decrease. So I'm gonna slip the next two stitches as if I'm knitting them together. Knit the next stitch from my left hand knitting needle. Now pass the previous two stitches that I slipped up, over, and off. Now I'm gonna knit the final stitch. Now when I turn my work, I'm gonna cast off these remaining three stitches. So we ended up with three, just the same number we started off with. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch purlwise. Now I'm gonna bring my working yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. Now I wanna take my previous stitch, slide it up over and off the existing stitch, knit the next stitch, slide the previous stitch up over and off the existing stitch. Pull this last stitch out just a little bit so now I'm going to cut my yarn, just leaving a short tail, about eight inches here or so. And I'm going to thread that yarn tail through that remaining stitch. Now the last step here is going to be to weave in both of my ends. So I'm just going to take a tapestry needle and then just trace along a few of the stitches here just to weave in and secure these two ends, then cut the yarn. Once I've woven in the ends, I'm gonna soak this in some lukewarm water and then I'm gonna block it flat. Now, what I think will be most useful here, just so I make sure they all end up roughly the same size, is I'm gonna measure out a square. So making sure each one of the sides is the same, start with one, and then as I pin each one of these in place on my blocking mats, I'm gonna make sure each one of them essentially ends up being the exact same dimensions. So that way they get a nice finished product. That way if you're giving them as a gift or something like that, all the edges look really clean and all exactly the exact same size. 
And now here are my finished project. So I think they look really cute. What I like to do is just stack a few of them on top of each other. Add a little gift tag. So this one just says Knitting House Square. And then on the back, I just put what it's made out of in the washing instructions. And you can either just tie a bow around it like this if you want to give it as a gift, or it also looks really cute if you roll them up and then tie a bow around it this way. So it kind of shows you all the colors at one time. <laughs> so those are the ways I like to give them. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. Especially this month, I'm putting out a whole bunch of new videos of quick knitting tutorials that make perfect holiday gifts. So I'll see you next time.